Hey everyone, I'm doing some work on my uh, Terramite, getting it ready for the season. I had a uh, hydraulic cylinder that was uh, leaking pretty bad on the uh, backhoe swing. So uh, I figure I'd do a little walk around and talk about and show what's on the inside of those and if it helps anybody, good. If not, too bad, you're watching anyway. <laughs> uh, this one, there's two cylinders. There's the hole from it. And it swung the other way, there's another cylinder on the back side. Yeah, what you can see of that last cylinder still sitting in there and uh, they're uh, sistered together running off the same hydraulics so the cylinder has been pulled out and it's on the bench so we'll go take a walk over to the bench and talk about what I got okay it's already apart and uh, it's in its segments so I will show what uh, comes in and goes out of what this is the body of the cylinder as you would take it out the other line that you see there uh, one goes to the other cylinder on the other side. The connectors that are on them, if you look at this one right here, you can see that that one just kind of threads into there. There's no way of really taking that out of there without that whole line being able to spin. So you got to look for where the connectors are that have this collar and the collar spins. That's where you're able to take them apart. So that's why you see the line removed from there. And uh, up by the control box is another line like that so the lines stay on. So the whole cylinder came out. Uh, how the cylinder actually gets removed from itself is on the end of it there's a cap you would see this cap sticking out of that cylinder and on that cap see what well, comes up but there's a, a set of holes one there one there they make a wrench that kind of goes on there and grabs it and turns on there but 90% uh, of the people do what I do they just take a punch and take the punch and start tapping it around and drawing it around what holds it together there's a little hole that you see right there and they use a piece of rod that rod uh, catches a groove here this is that part that it's getting locked into <clears throat> uh, falls into that hole and through through that hole into that hole and then the whole cylinder is, it whole piece is rotated and it draws that that piece of wire in there and that's what holds all the uh, hydraulics together. Once you get that removed, the whole cylinder guts will just come right out of there. And this is what's inside. Two pieces. This is the piece that the cylinder uh, slides to and fro. It has a seal on the outside. Pop this off. And if you can see it, there's a like a sweep on the there's a sweep on that edge and then there's another seal on the inside. Inspect your cylinder, see if you got any nicks or scratches. You can kind of, if you can feel anything with a finger, you kind of want to knock that down because that's what's going to beat up that, that rubber seal on there going back and forth. Um, and this is usually where you see the damage because this is exposed. So if you're moving gravel or whatnot around and that's where the stuff kind of comes down and beats up on them. Uh, I use Scotch-Brite and some, actually some chain lube because there was a little nick in one spot of it that I could feel as you went over it. And you just want them lower. You, I mean, you can't fix every little piece of it, but you can get any scratch that's on there that's sitting proud to get knocked down. Okay, that's that part. Sorry, I have a little bit of a cold. On this sleeve, there's an O-ring there. And if you look at it, there's a tapered uh, seal going each direction facing out as the pressure goes from one side to the other. If it was only a single acting cylinder, you'd only see one seal, not two. That goes on there. You get O-rings on the inside of it so it doesn't leak underneath it from side to side. Uh, it won't leak externally, but it'll, it'll just lose power. And then there's a large nut that holds all that together. Changing these outer seals here and here, they're very hard, brittle, I shouldn't say brittle, but just very stiff, they're not like the rubber seals, they're more like a, a hard nylon. Here's the old ones, for example. And you try squeezing them. They're, they're just very stiff, whereas like if you took a, say here's the O-ring, the O-ring's just like butter, moves no problem. Um, what works for me on a lot of things that uh, have that kind of consistency to them, like, I mean, you're trying to pop that off a screwdriver and you're trying to walk it around without damaging, damaging it. The old one's not that big of a deal, but the, of course the new ones you don't want to damage. Uh, what I do is, when the wife's not looking, I take a container, go in the house in the microwave, heat it up with hot water, 
and get it as hot as you can right before boiling and I just throw all the stuff right in it. It makes it very soft and pliable enough to be able to conform all those without because you don't want to scratch any of these neither don't forget you know if you put one scratch in it you're screwed it's, it's defeating the purpose. So uh, I walk them around with that and um, get I also do the metal too that the whole piece the old one with the, the two on there I also heat this up also uh, sometimes it helps to have like some kind of glove or something if it, it gets a little too hot for you that was probably 200 degrees and it just makes it so much easier to work with um, what that is also uh, useful for if you're working on like say old motorcycles or old oh whatever snowmobiles you know how you had the the let's see if I could see a picture on this one like the uh, intake the rubber boots you're trying to pull the carb off of something. Uh, I don't know if I can get in on this one. Too much plastic on it. Um, we'll just kind of use this for example. So you get the rubber boot here from this piece to this piece. Well, unlike a motorcycle, you'll have that rubber boot between the intake and the uh, the carburetor itself or the carb in the body and a lot of times you have to try to squeeze them in between the two halves because there's no room to get in there I do the same thing throw them in hot water they get nice and soft and pliable I mean as soon as they cool off they get right back to where they were but it keeps you from trying to tear them and you know how many times you smack your knuckles and try raking them around it works quite well on that uh, another thing it's really good for too Ever deal with these guys putting hand grips on? Some of them, uh, you know, new ones go on fairly easy and you uh, clean them up and kind of glue them. Uh, if you got old hand grips and you want to put them on, same idea. Throw them in there, heat them up really good, uh, and just clean everything. Don't have any kind of glue on them whatsoever. Get those as clean as possible, like Windex or whatever you have, a uh, little surface prep. So there's no oils, no glues, anything on them at all. Heat them up. Slide them on and let them cool off. They they lock right down. The rubber on the metal works very well. They don't slide at all. So, uh, so that's where we are. Uh, I just need to basically reassemble that cylinder. As far as tightening that jam nut back on, the whole body will slide right back over. Uh, again, when you're putting it together, just like anything, putting rings on a motor or whatever, you're gonna put oil on these, coat them down so that you uh, don't tear anything while you're assembling it. All the seals, same thing. Put a little bit on on the on the shaft also. And that's it. Put her all back together and put her back in the machine. Give her a test drive and uh, make sure you're good to go. So, And uh, if the wife wonders why uh, dinner tastes like uh, WD-40 or you know 40 weight, you just dummy up and you say, I don't know. And, uh, you must be buying that cheap food again. But, uh, <laughs> just uh, plead the fifth. Works for me. Until she watches this video, I guess. Alright guys like what you're watching uh, please subscribe I'll make more and uh, maybe I'll make a video tomorrow uh, they just bumped up our snowstorm from 1 to 2 inches to 6 to 12 now so we might be doing a little bit of a demo with the uh, Terramite tomorrow uh, anyway so uh, gotta get her together uh, thanks for watching